Our country is, is, it is what it is because of the professional engineers who have given their energy and time to serve this nation. We have uh, one of the most established infrastructure sector, whether it is the roads, whether it's the ports, whether it's the airport. There is no sector that we do not have, that we have not used. Not just engineers from other countries. Despite the fact that uh, we continue having engineers coming from other countries, but by and large, I don't think we can say that in this nation, we have more than 10% of foreigners performing engineering work here. In fact, to the contrary, it is the contracts that go to uh, companies that are foreign entities, but the work is done by these same engineers here, which means if we continue building the capacity of our engineers, they should be able to undertake that responsibility themselves directly without necessarily having to go through uh, uh, the other sectors. Your Excellency, um, we are going to a sector where we are in a, a generation where we depend on our engineers in the next phase of our development to have a climate resilient infrastructure, Your Excellency, to use and deploy technology to resolve the problems that we have. We are now adopting the ITS, uh, which is uh, intelligent traffic systems. We are dealing with issues, uh, Your Excellency, of installation of high-speed cameras to enforce our uh, um, uh, traffic uh, uh, flow in our country. We are also dealing with matters of uh, greening our infrastructure, Your Excellency, and these engineers are going to be in the forefront in making sure that this is delivered. There are only three or four things I want to say. One is that we need to invest more on training and capacity building of our engineers. I know there is a moratorium. There is a moratorium on how many people can go out for training and so forth. Uh, we, you need to help us, Your Excellency, with the President and uh, the uh, public service to make sure that this moratorium of not traveling, not going for trainings, should not affect the training of our engineers. Your Excellency, without the world, is a competitive world. It's a competitive. If these men and women sitting here do not continue updating their knowledge, the knowledge they have will be obsolete. And the changes happens in, 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 in within a year, you know, the environment has already changed. If you tell an engineer that they are not going to be trained, they are not going to update their knowledge, we are likely to suffer the consequences of failing to train. But more importantly, in the university training, we need to invest more in our colleges, in making sure that the training at the university level exposes the students more to practical knowledge than to the theory alone. <laughs> Meaning that in the funding criteria of assisting the engineering schools, we need to make sure that that process is properly regulated and more resources are given. And EBK, Engineering Board of Kenya, you need to sort out the issues of accreditation of universities so that our children do not graduate and they are now told your institution was not accredited. I think that process should be seamless. We don't want the situation we are in. The, th the second issue, Your Excellency, is professionalism. Your Excellency, professional negligence, even though these engineers are doing a great job, the fear of having some few of them breaking the law, committing acts of professional negligence, has led Your Excellency to sometimes very poor bridges being built or infrastructure. Your Excellency, you know, we have an airport in Nairobi that we renovated just the other day. We haven't even commissioned it. We were hoping to invite you and the president to come and commission. Before commissioning, it's leaking, Your Excellency. And you ask yourself, who was the professional in charge of the standards that are required, including the resident engineer of that place? We need, and I agree with Engineering uh, Engineers Board of Kenya, that we need a register that registers all projects and the engineers who, who supervise the projects, the resident engineer and the people who are undertaking, the contractors who are undertaking that work, so that we can track, Your Excellency, the people who are operating uh, in our infrastructure and make sure that we hold them into account. And therefore, we support Engineering Board of Kenya 
in making sure that we register all these professionals and register their project and hold them accountable. <laughs> Finally, Your Excellency, um, we want to ensure that in a private sector, particularly the ministries that we lead, including mine, that we hire professionals only on professional grounds. No tribal consideration, no regional consideration, no ethnic consideration. Your Excellency, sometimes you go to a ministry and you find people who completely cannot undertake the work they have been given. Only to find out that the minister was his relative, or the peers was the relative, or the DG. In fact, in one of the institutions, I don't want to say, we have been dealing with engineer Mbugwa, I don't want to say which institution, we found out that most of the professionals who are leading at a top level do not have even the requisite papers to hold the positions they do. And we have exited them quietly, without calling the media, without uh, doing much, because, Your Excellency, we want to make sure that these institutions remain professionals. Something that I promise the country is that I will work hard to make sure that we promote and integrate women engineers to lead in this sector, Your Excellency. I know that the, in the past people thought that, and you will forgive me for this, that uh, female engineers are very rough people <laughs> with shaggy hair, with very rough hands, Your Excellency. But you can see how beautiful they are. You saw it for yourself. Yeah? But just not physical beauty, but they have the brains and the capacity to lead. And as a father of a daughter, I want my daughter also to grow aspiring to be an engineer and to know that if they become an engineer, they will have an opportunity to serve in this country. Your Excellency, I agree with the people who have said we need to improve the business environment for our engineers. But I want to caution you. Most of you bid for work for the 40% content with foreign companies. But you do so without proper legal advice and protection. In fact, you assist foreign companies to get business in our country because there are mandatory legal standards that have received. But because you wanted to do it in darkness, you are a professional, but you don't want to use a professional lawyer. And I'm not asking for business for myself. <laughs> yeah? You go and agree in a corner somewhere, and then that particular contractor runs away from the contract. How many of you have come to my office saying, I have a payment I'm following from this company. We were part of 40%. Help us enforce. If you want the entity and the agency and the country to help you enforce, we want to request you also to go through the proper legal processes of agreeing with the foreign contractor so that your fair share of 40% is secured. And we are ready to protect you, but protect yourself by being also a professional.